Remember, as you navigate any health challenge, it's always recommended that you partner with a medical practitioner that shares your philosophy of the care of the human body in disease and in health. The information shared in this presentation is meant to educate and improve your wellness toolbox and aid in returning to health if sick and maintaining good health when well. It should not be construed as medical advice, simply as tools that have been successfully used by others in similar situations. As always, investigate and verify any treatment, protocol, or procedure for yourself, not blindly accepting anything without due diligence. Thomas Edison said that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. That quote by Thomas Edison is clearly reflected in the work of the Spirit of Prophecy by Ellen White, who preceded Thomas Edison by some years. Our topic today is Solomon's seal, polygonatum, and there are a variety of different species that make up the Solomon seal family, but they have similar characteristics. Last time in part 14, we looked at false Solomon seal, so we will again compare those two because they are both useful in medicinal and edible properties. Solomon seal grows widely across the Nor North American continent as well as across the world in various locations. <clears throat> A temperate climate is typically conducive to the growing of Solomon seal. False Solomon seal again has the flower cluster at the end of the flower stalk. You can see that the leaves are slightly offset and yet alternate but closer to being opposite than alternate. And in the fall after the flower is complete, it has a red berry cluster at the end. Now, false Solomon seal, as you recall, the berries are edible. Excessive amounts may lead to a laxative effect though, so be moderate in, the, in their consumption. On the other hand, the layout of Solomon seal is significantly different has a beautiful little bell-like flowers all along the underside of the stem beneath the alternate leaves, so they're not opposite. You can see the lower picture with the berries, the two blue berries hanging down, how they're hanging from the node of the leaf, and how they are alternate. And they're directly alternate, not, not even closely opposite like that of false, or false Solomon seal. The berries of the Solomon seal, the true Solomon seal, are not considered edible <clears throat> and in fact can be toxic if eaten in quantity. So the difference, primary differences in Solomon seal are the flower arrangement and the blueberry that is not edible. And in false Solomon seal, the flower arrangement is at the end with a red berry cluster that is edible. We'll now discuss some of the edibility components of the Solomon seal. Here's a great picture of the Solomon seal with the flower clusters below the leaf nodes. They can grow in quite dense clusters at times and have a can have a significant rhizome that is produced. That rhizome has a number of different properties, so it's the root-like structure. A rhizome, as compared to a root, is considered an underground stem because it can shoot up it shoots all along the stem as opposed to most roots are significantly underground and have a primary point of foliage emergence. Eating the shoots of the Solomon seal, you can see some fresh shoots coming up out of the ground in the picture on the left. You can cook them, steam them like asparagus one of the best ways to know that you have Solomon seal when it's coming out is to be aware of your surroundings and have noted them in their adult stages in prior seasons so that you can be sure and be picking what you think you are. So on this plate here is some steamed Solomon seal. On the lower left are actually some a different variety of, of green plant. Uh, I believe it's hosta, but the upper 
are definitely the freshly picked shoots of the Solomon seal with a scattering of it looks like perhaps fireweed blossoms and violet blossoms. So we know that both fireweed and violets have great color as well as medicinal value and edibility associated with them. You could even do that with a little bit of garlic and they have a little bit of a sauce here that could be dipped into of some kind. <clears throat> the rhizome if you're using the rhizome, the term Solomon seal, if you look at this rhizome on the lower right, you can see the point at which the scarring, those three brown scarred areas, kind of look like a king's signet seal in some manner of speaking. That is where it comes from the term Solomon seal. That's where the, the shoots would have come up from that rhizome and come up to the surface. But if you're going to be using it, you'd want to cut it up and then soak it to re and rinse the water off before cooking like a potato. You could then also dry the rhizome and grind it, grind it into a powder. And you can use that powder for bread flour. So they are gathered from dense stands of Solomon seal because they'll pro produce a significant rhizome if left to grow for some time. So a warning again, the berries are not edible in this particular plant, although the rest of the plant is useful for ingestion and use uh, topically. So particularly in large amounts, the berries uh, can be toxic. From a medicinal standpoint, because most food that is naturally grown and naturally occurring, even that which is commercially grown and or cultivated in an agricultural standpoint can have therapeutic benefits. Thinking broccoli, thinking onions, thinking things like that that have tremendous garlic, tremendous healing properties. It's when we get into the merchandise of food, refined food, edible food-like substances and products that we start stepping away from their therapeutic benefits and their nutritional uh, powerhouses to the fractionated uh, empty portions of calories and having nutrients replaced. So they have anti-nutrient and anti-health benefits when we move into food merchandise. <clears throat> so the, the root can be used. Uh, it can be used for preventing bruising, uh, tissue repair, skin blemishes. It's actually very good for, for bruised skin. A salve of the bruised leaves mixed with oil is great for a black eye. Basically, it helps treat the bruised skin. You can use the rhizome root powder in a poultice. You can mix it with a little bit of water or oil to make a paste. Put that on the bruised skin so you can do that with both the leaves and the root powder. Helps reduce inflammation and swelling and lower the risk of infection. It's also a good topical application for, for hemorrhoids because it limits the swelling and the irritation and itching associated with that. Also beneficial for boils, which are skin eruptions of things that are going on within the body uh, at the skin level. So you can also apply Solomon Seal Leaf Tea, so make an infusion directly from the leaves, fresh leaves and or dry leaves, and you can apply that to acne or other skin blemishes. Chronic sufferers of acne can use the tea as a, as a regular wash on the surface of their skin. So essentially, acne is a hair follicle that has become infected because it has become clogged by the exuding uh, oils and white blood cells have come to the area to mitigate the infection and create a, an eruption. For the use in the stomach, for dysentery or stomach upset, the powder of the rhizome is a soothing Agent has a mucilaginous quality to the powder. That is, when you add water to it, it uh, creates a, a mucus, a polysaccharide mucus. You can see an example of a mucus over here on the right, a mucilage, which is chia. So chia is another excellent mucilage, which has similar properties. Chia actually has a very beneficial source of omega-3s. But this gel is similar to what you would see with something like slippery elm or with the powder of 
the Solomon seal, Rhizo. So it's anti-inflammatory in nature, very soothing to the gastrointestinal tract. You can make a cold infusion of the of the uh, cold infusion tea of the leaves. So you're using cold water versus hot water for making this type of a tea. It can be really helpful for things like heartburn, which is essentially is a gastrointestinal reflux of stomach acid coming up into the upper GI, which makes it feel like the heart is burning. So it's in the same region, but has nothing to do with the heart. It's just the region. And other gastrointestinal inflammatory situations, diarrhea and ulcers of the stomach. So essentially, the mucus is made up of a mucopolysaccharide. So muco is referring to the mucus or the viscous nature of it. Poly means many, saccharide means sugar. So it's uh, sugar forming chains that are found in the rhizome powder that hydro, hydrolyze, not hydrolyze, but they hydrate and create this, the mucus that is, has a soothing agent or act, uh, activity to it. Yi Wang et al. in Experimental Biology, Medicine, Mayo Wood, or May Wood, uh, January of 2017, did some research, some original research, on the protective effects of polygonatum, uh, which is the Solomon seal against diabetic um, rat model issues. So the Solomon seal, which is polygonatum sabricium, this, the polysaccharide or the sugar chains suppressed oxidative stress reactions in the diabetic rat models. They also delayed cataract progression in a dose-dependent manner, i.e. the more that the Solomon seal was utilized, the greater the effect of the cataract progression delay. You don't want to overdo the amount, but in a dose-dependent manner, not saying that a lot, but just that more is is uh, has a greater effect when in a comparative relative dose. Also, allevi alleviated retinal vasculopathy in a dose-dependent manner. So again, as dose increased, the retinopathy, or the, not the retinopathy, but the, the vasculopathy, which is basically a, a retinal blood vessel disease, a, a constriction of the retinal blood vessels disease, which can affect the retina and can lead to blindness, as can cataract development. And then also help to uh, mitigate hyperglycemia, which is excessive blood sugar spike. Hypoglycemia is a depressed blood sugar. Hyperglycemia would be excessive blood sugar high spikes and also reduces oxidative stress. So those are some significant things that this team of researchers found significantly connected with the sugar chains, the mucilage quality of the Solomon seal poly, polygonatum. Some respiratory benefits, anti-inflammatory in nature, this soothes the irritated airways, so drinking airways, airways, drinking, it is a beneficial way. It actually has expectorant properties, basically helps to loosen the mucus and aid in its, its uh, expulsion through coughing. Here are several different ways the tea can be presented. <clears throat> the cold infusion tea can be helpful for a dry cough or a productive cough. So a productive cough is one that actually you cough enough phlegm and mucus with it. Infections of the respiratory system, so up, URIs, which are upper respiratory infections, can be beneficial for that, as well as sore throats. It's actually been effective treatment in tuberculosis, TB, and bleeding of the lungs. The early pioneers and Native Americans used it significantly for that condition. The powdered root and flowers uh, can help clear the nasal and bronchial airways when, when snuffed. In the muscular system, the fresh Solomon seal root tincture, or tea, so a tincture wouldn't be super fresh, but it'd be made from fresh leaves as opposed from dried leaves. Uh, rub it on the inflamed tissue two to three times a day until healing is complete. So that would be on torn tissue or bruised tissue, overstretched muscles, so a muscle strain, uh, tendons, joints, and ligaments, so that's all the faculties that move the bones and the joints. Also helps broken bones and sprains. So again, that's muscles and tendons and ligaments when you have a sprain. Herniated discs, that's in the back. Uh, tendonitis, arthritis, joint pain. So essentially, the Solomon Seal Tincture Tea, from an external perspective, rubbed at the surface of the injury, 
connect, uh, soothe the connective tissue and cartilage and the associated inflammation and irritation with, with those types of um, damage that occur. So a very helpful way to address those issues. Reproductive issues, so it can help both women and men. For women, uh, vaginal dryness can be helped, it helps heal the inflamed tissues and aids in, in conception. Uh, can help reduce uh, menstrual crap and cramping and other menopausal symptoms can be reduced significantly. So menopause, you have hot flashes and other hormonal fluctuations that can help be leveled out with the use of Solomon Seal. Also the tear tincture can help in male fertility and sometimes there can be issues of uh, premature ejaculation and it can aid in mitigating that as well. Can help the heart. Functions as an overall heart tonic can help helps the heart towards health. So that's what a tonic does. Helps to regulate the heart, lowers high blood pressure, has a mild a diuretic effect, and functions a little bit like dandelion in the fact that it has a blood detoxification effect. Anything that can help detoxify the blood is is good. You want to keep your blood pure and flowing uh, freely and smoothly so that it can go to all the tissues of the body. If there's any kind of flow disruption or <clears throat> coagulation, thickening of the blood that takes place, for example, by the use of, of free fats in the diet, it has an instant blood thickening effect that will reduce its blood fluidity. It's also called its hemorrheology. There's a book called The Methuselah Factor, uh, which basically talks about blood fluidity and also known as hemorrheology, or the flow factors of the blood. So it can help the blood move around the body more freely. So use the Solomon Seal Tea. So you can use that uh, to help with your heart conditions. Now it's always important to enlist the uh, oversight of your physician, especially if you're utilizing medication or have a, a known condition. Because as you use natural products, natural things that God has made and put in, in our uh, ability and practice, if you are taking medication, there will be medication adjustments that need to be made because if you continue taking a medication that pharmaceutically addresses a particular symptom that a plant extract or tea or consumption is lowering and making that need for that medication less or re eliminates its need, taking the medication could be detrimental. So those medications will need to be adjusted and tested as you have a movement towards health again. Also can function as a, in a mild sedative fashion. So the tea and the tincture has a, a calming and soothing action on the nervous system. It's very helpful as an overall tonic for body strengthening and can help to alleviate pain and discomfort. In the immune system, can help improve the immune system. So using a tincture and or the infusion or tea they can help regulate the body and the immune system uh, systemically. So immune system, systemic immune system benefits, has anti-inflammatory effects. Again, we saw the tissue healing components when we talked about bruising as well as the muscular system. So remember, a tincture is something you need, you need to prepare ahead of time, and a tea is something that can be made on the spot. So it tends to grow in clumps. So let it grow or have a well-established clump. This is an ornamental a uh, picture of an ornamental Solomon seal, even a variegated variety. All the different species of Solomon seal are beneficial. Some can grow quite large, others are fairly small. You want to leave some of the some of the rhizome behind so it can uh, regrow for future harvests. Uh, one thing that you want to remember is that this particular plant you don't want to use if the person is pregnant or breastfeeding. Uh, it can interfere with blood sugar control for diabetics i.e. if you're taking blood pressure medication, not blood pressure, but diabetic uh, medication, we saw that it has mitigating effects on hyperglycemia, that is the rapid rise of blood sugar. And if you're taking something that's going to lower, or a glucophage, for example, that's going to take the sugar out of commission, then you could end up having a glucose shortage because our body do, does use glucose or, or some uh, form of that for energy. Don't use it prior to surgical procedures because it can also interview, inter, uh, interfere with blood and sugar, blood sugar control post-operatively as well as surgically. 
The fruit, again, is poisonous in large quantities. Again, in many cases, it doesn't take a lot to do the job. A little bit goes a long ways. We talked about a dose-dependent manner. So start with a little and move up a little bit incrementally. So as you take more, it doesn't mean a lot, but as you take more, the dose-dependent manner, the effect can be uh, more pronounced of the Solomon seal. And that can be true for almost any plant extract that you're using. So when we're looking at the preparation of a Solomon seal cold infused tea, it's different than you would do for a hot infused tea. The hot infused tea, of course, you're just pouring boiling water over your plant material over the leaves, and you can use a hot extracted tea from Solomon seal as well as a cold one. Uh, in fact, <clears throat> uh, the hot tea works well for lots of other issues, but one of the things that is beneficial from the cold infusion is it, it magnifies the mucilaginous effects of the Solomon seal. So it's very good for gastrointestinal stress issues as well as uh, upper respiratory bronchial uh, inflammation types of situations. So using the Solomon seal to make a cold infusion. You would use one and a half teaspoons of the Solomon seal root, finely chopped, so that's the rhizome again, and three cups of cold water. So that those are your those are your supplies. So you get this is going to be an overnight steep, or an overnight cold steep. So in the evening, put one and a half teaspoons of Solomon seal root into a jar, so 24 to 32 ounce jar. Add three cups of cold water and cap it tightly. So your volume of water is the same, three cups and three cups, but your jar size can be variable. Let that set overnight at room temperature. So it's gonna steep, and during that steeping process, it's gonna extract the beneficial properties of the Solomon seal using the cold water instead of hot water. So the hot water may cause some degradation of some of the compounds you're trying to extract in the cold infusion, while it may activate others that have other benefits from a hot infusion. But we're using a cold infusion in this case. So the following day, once you've woken up, you can strain off the leaves and have a delightful honey appearing Solomon seal tea and just sip that all throughout the day. So by the end of the evening, that, that three cups should be completely uh, consumed by early evening. So you can drink it cold or you can use it slightly warmed if the warm goes down a little bit better. It's also acceptable. So that's looking at Solomon seal, kind of a follow-up from part 14, looking at false Solomon seal. Both of the Solomon seals are therapeutically beneficial as well as having edible characteristics, similar edible characteristics other than the berries. The false Solomon seal with the red berries and the end flower cluster are edible, but the blue colored berries of the Solomon seal, which would hang below the leaves on the stem, are not uh, edible and in fact considered toxic. So again, God's provided for us another very versatile tool that we can use just simply by going to our garden or going into the garden that God has provided in nature.